What's up guys, JV2017 here, bringing you another Destiny tips and tricks video. And today we are looking at all of the exotic weapon changes that were introduced with Update 2.0. Bungie has nerfed some of our favorite weapons and buffed the underappreciated ones for the Taken King. So I figured the easiest way to cover this is to go through and identify what was nerfed, what was buffed, and what was balanced. So bear with me, I'm going to try and get through all of the changes in a reasonable amount of time, Let's go ahead and start out with the primaries. So first one we're talking about is the hard light. Its stability was increased to 80. The projectiles that you get with a hard light now have an increased bounce count and they have no damage fall off. So this is overall a buff for this weapon. Next up, the Suros. I say this is a balanced change. That's kind of my in-between kind of uh, quality that I give weapons that were both buffed and nerfed. So the stability was reduced on this weapon, so more recoil, but they added a range boost suit to the focus fire uh, little node here. So I'd say that's a balanced change right there. Now let's talk about the Necrochasm. I don't have this weapon, so I can't show you, but overall it was buffed. The stability was increased to 60, magazine size increased, the Cursebringer perk will now always trigger a, an explosion on precision kill. And also the radius was increased on the explosion with more damage. Also rangefinder perk has been replaced by the Zen moment perk as well. So that is an overall buff for that weapon. The last word is the next weapon we're talking about here. And I would say this is a overall balance change. Some people will call this a nerf. The range was reduced, the stability was reduced, but accuracy while in hip fire, which is how you're supposed to use this weapon, is increased. Precision damage aim assist while in hip fire is also increased. And they also fixed a little bug for damage bonuses and hip fire. So <clears throat> overall, this is going to be a more effective uh, weapon in my opinion, but I'm still going to call it balanced here. So next up, the thorn. Let's talk about the thorn. People will say this is a nerf. I call it a balance, actually. The base damage of Mark of the Devourer, which is a DOT on this weapon, is reduced by a third for both PvE and PvP, but the DOT stacks now up to five times over multiple shots so this is overall a buff in damage but it's spread out so you can't just shoot people twice and get a kill with the thorn in pvp anymore it'll actually be more effective in pve now so that's an interesting change right there so that's it for the thorn let's talk about the hawk moon again i can't have i don't even have that because i'm not on a playstation console here but the hawk moon had some perk changes luck in the chamber and holding aces perks now have a stacking limit of two only two of the bonus damage perks will ever stack, which should eliminate the Hawkmoon one-hit PvP kill to, to an undamaged opponent. <clears throat> Excuse me. Holding Aces perk now increases magazine size by two rounds. So that is a, uh, a little buff right there. So now let's talk about the No Land Beyond, which is a weapon that a lot of people made fun of. It actually got burfed, uh, burfed, <laughs> buffed. They fixed an issue where there were overlap parallax issues in sights during ADS view. The base handling was increased, which is like a, an invisible stat in the game. And the master perk now is an increased base uh, damage multiplier right here. Uh, bonus scaler from 2.6 times to 3 times, which is very exciting stuff there. Next is the Mythoclast, and I don't have that weapon, so I'm just going to tell you guys about it. It was buffed. The projectile speed was increased to compensate for global fusion rifle changes, and also stability increased to compensate for global fusion rifle changes as well. So overall buff for that weapon. The Universal Remote, which is a weapon I do have. I think I've gotten like four of these. It's crazy how much this has dropped for me. Um, it was just burp, buffed, burped again. Base range was increased by 20 for the Universal Remote. So there you go. That was a nice little change there. Uh, the Monte Carlo, another weapon I don't have, was buffed in my opinion. Stability was increased to compensate for the changes to assault rifles. They also fixed an issue where a perk did not trigger when killing players. So it also doesn't trigger anymore when killing objects, but, you know, it shouldn't have in the first place. Next change they made was to the Bad Juju, which is an overall buff. The stability was increased to compensate with pulse rifles. So I've always loved the bad juju, so I'm glad to see that weapon um, get a little buff there. Next up, Red Death was buffed. Range was increased and stability was increased to compensate with those pulse rifle changes, which uh, again, I'm a huge fan of those. So 
that's all of the changes with primary weapons. Let's go ahead and talk about, which was basically the majority. If you guys have been wondering, when's this video gonna end? Uh, it will end, I promise, but <laughs> that was all of the primary changes. Now let's talk about the special special changes, excuse me. Um, first off, the icebreaker was nerfed. Unfortunately, the ammo recharge time was increased. Uh, I've got two sources, one that says eight seconds now, one that says seven, but it used to be five. So in any case, <clears throat> it is absolutely nerfed, which is a little, uh, a little disappointing to be honest, but hey, what are you gonna do? Um, that's just how it is. Let's talk about the Black Hammer. It's a weapon I don't have. It's also not an exotic, but it pretty much should be. Um, it got burfed. <laughs> it got nerfed. Uh, this is hilarious. It got nerfed. The White Nail perk now fills the magazine from ammo in your reserves. It doesn't produce ammo anymore, so that's uh, a little upsetting there. However, now let's get to the good side of the special... I think I call them secondary. Special weapons. The Lord of Wolves got buffed. There, I got it right that time. The Rally perk now offers... Where's Rally? Where are you, Rally? Well, I think it's Devil's Touch, actually. Um, so, Bungie, fix your notes. It now grants plus five recovery to allies in close proximity. It says plus three right there. Um, I don't know if that's something they need to change, but Lord of Wolves has been buffed. And the other weapon that's been buffed is the Plan C. The Plan C now basically complies with a lot of the changes that they introduced in terms of weapon balancing. So range and stability are increased because they were increased for all fusion, fusion rifles. So there we go, guys. Now let's move on to heavy weapons. And there are only two heavy weapon changes to the Thunderlord and the Gallahorn. I'm sure you can guess <laughs> which one of those was a buff and which was a nerf. The Thunderlord was a buff. Arc detonation chance for lightning rounds is increased by 50%, which is awesome. I've already, I've already loved this weapon, so it's awesome. Also, the magazine size was, I think that's more than doubled. So the Thunderlord got a huge buff. Um, really excited for that. And then of course, the old Gallahorn got nerfed. It got nerfed. I think everyone was expecting that. Um, these tracking rounds are not as effective anymore. They reduce the damage by roughly a third. So, not a huge buff, but I guess a third damage is uh, <clears throat> you know, significant enough. So, anyways guys, that was a really long rambly video, but those are all the changes to exotic weapons with update 2.0 and for the Taken King. So, hope you guys learned something new, and if you did, remember to hit that like button. I really would appreciate it. And also don't forget to stay tuned and subscribe to my channel for continuing Taken King coverage. The game is so close. It's only like four or five days away. I'm super excited, and I hope you guys are as well. So, talk to you all next time. Peace.